I so they're going to start over now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rafi. I'm Jane Sutherland. I'm an instructional designer in the School of Nursing. All right. I am Hannah Insko. I'm the manager for the Media Commons. I work here in ETS. I'm Kate Mithit. I'm an instructional designer here in ETS. I'm Stephanie Vasco. I'm a postdoc at the Rock Ethics Institute, and I work on designing interactive online modules to teach about ethics issues in topics and sustainability. <laughs> I'm Chris Bubbs. I head up the Educational Gaming Commons, and I've also been working with Brett uh, for quite some time on digital badges. Melissa Hicks, instructional designer with the College of IST. Uh, Elizabeth White, a postdoc and lecturer in psychology. Jason Nungerman, Learn Design Technology, first year PhD student. Mary Jansen, I'm a writer editor here in ETS. Okay, that's everybody in the room. Does anybody online want to uh, introduce themselves? I'm Laura Gurton. I teach earth science at Penn State Brandywine. Hey, Laura. Lorraine Hawkins, biology, Penn State Monalto. Griff Lewis, I'm the instructional designer at Worthington Scranton campus. Hey, Griff. Uh, Margie Bachelor, Continuing Education at Brandywine. Okie doke, and I guess everyone else has chosen to remain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, one thing before I do get started, um, we do have a chat window here, and I decided to pre-populate that with some links. Um, probably a good idea to copy those now, copy and paste them somewhere else because they'll scroll up off as people start chatting. Um, so I'm going to, to begin by sharing my screen and going into a presentation. And uh, I have um, um, some assistance here so that we will keep track and feel free to chime in at any point or type into the chat. And, you know, there's no need to hold, it, hold back on anything uh, until it's done. So without further ado... It is. is it slow? It, there's a little bit of delay. <laughs> we can watch everything that you just did. Okay, now you're good. Hopefully everything will come up now. It's good. So, yep. so the title is, is Badges. We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> and hopefully I'll show you where that saying originated from in just a minute. But So I, I did introduce myself. I've been here since 1984. Here forever. <laughs> That's a picture of me as my short-term career as a wireless cable guy. Mm -hmm. um, didn't quite work out the way I hoped. Um, actually, I found an OPP hard hat in a dumpster one day, and being the dumpster diver, I almost <laughs> pulled it out and stuck it on, and then a guy here decided he had to take a picture of me in that, so that's what that's all about. <laughs> Can you just type in the chat that I, I, I died? I'm going to come back in. Oh, just when you're going to have a... Mm, of course. A funny moment. Uh, of course, like I said, I got it. I'm going to another browse. I think Adobe Connect disagreed that she looked like Jeff Point. I think that's what it was. Anytime you wish for me. I did crash, but I'm logging back in as I speak. I need some Jeopardy music here. <laughs> Why we're doing that, I do know I have a slide coming. Just basically ask the audience. What do you know about digital badges? Anybody wanted to come in on that while we're waiting for Adobe Connect to crawl to a crawl back to its knees? Hey, 
They don't prick you. Yeah, digital badges don't prick you. That's right. Yeah, you can. So that's true. After I'd heard you talking, uh, people in our unit talking about this for a while, I realized that I may have gotten some, and I just didn't know that this was called. Like I'm in a online application library thing, uh-huh. and I've like written some reviews and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and they they have like, these little medals that I've gotten for being a help helpful so, person. So there you go. You you have received digital badges of of uh-huh. some sort. Um, anyone else? Um, online, uh, Lorraine Hawkins says that badges are getting um, getting attention in the press. Absolutely, they have been for about a year and a half, but even more so at the past six months. Okay, so that's oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they're they're a primary force driving driving a lot of it. Driving, think about it. And I don't think I need. To. Everybody can, I don't know if you're going to go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, why I'm on the The idea of people back, the idea of has been around. Uh, but, uh, on the phone to mute. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. If somebody on the phone that sounds like you're moving furniture, if you could and uh, typing, and yeah, yeah, if you could if you could mute your <laughs> mic, that would be much appreciated. Um, so, if you imagine the idea of badges as being similar to say Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, right? If they're sort of visual representations of some accomplishment. Digital badges just take that online uh, in a lot of ways, and so you see it a lot in games. We've seen it in applications like Foursquare. But they were always separate systems, and so what Mozilla came in to do was essentially say, well, let's define a standard actually, that anyone can build on uh, to essentially find some level of, of continuity between all these badges. So whether or not you're getting them for, for you know, a library application or for a game or for a club that you're a part of, uh, there's a single place that everybody can go okay. to organize them, to earn them, to showcase them. We actually see uh, them. So that's what Mozilla's backpack actually is. And I might add that I think one of their big initiatives is to use it as a way to vet your skills and to be able to put something on a resume that people can understand to say, I have this badge in um, like JavaScript or like this piece of jQuery, and now I can show you as a central employer that I have gone through and done activities that prove my worthiness. When Mozilla started it, that was one of their primary interests was they had all these communities of developers and things like that that they worked with, but they had no idea how to route who knew what in what community. Because you have resumes and you have job experience, but what is that? It differs depending on where you came from, how good a writer you are. Uh, so they were looking for some standard to, to compare people, compare skills, and experiences. Okay. So can people in the end see that? Yep. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. This is an alternative. I'm glad I preloaded this. It doesn't have the movies that I wanted to show you, and this is a this is a really funny movie. It's from the from, from the book, The Treasures of the Sierra Nevada, and there's a famous line in there where the the gunslinger is hiding behind the rocks, and Federales come up to him and they say, "We're we're the Federales, we're we're the good guys." And he says, "Show me your badge." And the the one guy here that's standing up, he looks around for a second, and then he says, "Badges." We don't have no badges. We don't need to show you no stinking badges. And so that's where it all came from, believe it or not. It's also parodies and Blazing Saddles. Yeah, I have a picture of Blazing Saddles, too. <laughs> so, okay, so I always like to start out by saying gamification is dumb and badges are stupid. Then I usually follow that by saying, no, I'm, obviously I'm lying about that or I wouldn't be here. But there are a lot of people that think that. Um, and mostly it's because they don't understand what they are potential. So that, today, I hope to kind of shed some light on it, and the good, the bad, and the ugly, too, um, about what they are. So we talked about level of knowledge of digital badges a little bit here, which was our filler while I was getting back up to speed. Um, So here's a definition. It's an online record of an achievement that you've earned, the work that was required to do it, and information about the entity that issued the badge in the first place. That's ideally what a digital badge should be all about. You should have those three things. Why are they important? Well, there's a couple of things going on. You probably 
heard about some of these and talked about some of them. Um, bottom line is education could be perceived as being under attack, higher ed. Uh, costs are spiraling up. Um, employers are looking for different things. They're looking for skills. Not and, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of the recent ads from the University of Phoenix where they're really trying to push how they're connecting back to business and industry and providing what they want as opposed to what we in higher ed. You could argue that. I think that could be a whole set of thing of itself. Um, we have open courseware that's out there now. We have these MOOCs that are out there, which I'm And then we have badges. We have all and I need you to believe that of the thing that I can is the barbarians are at the gate. Um, and there ain't nothing. But um, if you if you look at this um, if you look at all the things that are happening all at once, it's almost say it's like the perfect storm. So there are going to be some I believe there'll be drastic changes in the higher education landscape in the next decade. And badges might or might not be a potential way for us to um, get through to the other side. So again, I can't show this, but this is from Blazing Saddles. And if you've ever seen Blazing Saddles, he gives them a badge and he says, we don't need these stinking badges and he throws them down. So not near as fun when you can't show it to you. But <laughs> anyway, um, so they are an overt recognition or reward of an achievement, or at least they should be. Um, and they are meant to be displayed. They're meant for other people to actually look at. The real world example, obviously, is Scout. Um, you know, there's the, there's the, the Boy Scout with, with all the, the badges that he's earned. And those are earned badges. You don't just, they don't just hand them out. Um, badges have been used in games for a number of years. You know, complete a task, earn a badge. Um, you can even get all sorts of silly badges too, like I know in um, the one game, if you actually enter in cheat codes, it recognizes and you get the dirty cheater badge. So, yeah. Um, so Mozilla is, is uh, you know, obviously organization with Firefox and all that. Um, and they've actually started an initiative to try to formalize this in a very humble way, I guess is how I would put it. Um, so here's what here's what Mozilla is, is trying to accomplish at the moment um, with their open badges initiative. Um, they want they want a badge to have these three things attached to it. What the achievement was, what was required to to obtain the badge, and the information about the organizer organizer, individual, or whoever that actually issued the badge. And the idea being that you can click on this badge and you can see those three different things. So you might have all heard the term micro-credentialing, that's another term. Um, if you think of it as a certificate, as the different parts of a certificate that add up to a certificate, digital badges might fit that definition as well. Um, here's an example. So this is um, a little pilot that I ran last semester with ITS Training Services. I wrote a thing for faculty called Roundtables, and we did one on Gamma. Um, I, I issued badges to people that wanted them. So that's an actual picture of the badge. But the idea is, so this is a badge, it's, it's actually a ping file, a PNG file, that has metadata attached to it. It's invisible to the, you can't actually see it. But when you click on the image, it should either show you that criteria or take you to a website or something where you can see, obviously you have got it because you're looking at it, but you should be able to see what did they have to do to earn it, um, what and, and what evidence do what's the evidence? You know, did they actually do what they needed to do? And then who issued the, the thing? So you should be able to see all that kind of stuff. Um, so the OBI project, the Open Badges Infrastructure Project, was started by Mozilla. And as I said, openbadges.org is a place you can go if you want a lot more information. But really, they're trying to keep it as simple as possible in the, in the data that's behind these badges. And we're constantly going back and forth with them. I know a colleague of mine, Ken Lang, and I are constantly going back and forth with them right now on um, digital signatures of badges so that they can't be spoofed. So, you know, if I, as an issuer, digitally sign the badge, extra guarantees that somebody can go out and create a fake badge and put it up on their site. Um, so I applaud them for their work. And I also applaud them for trying to keep it as simple as possible so that it fits a plethora of uses. Um, so I'm going to show you a series of images here that I put together, um, and I 
have a series of them because I've yet to find one that everyone understands the first one that I show them or the second one. So I say, but what about, but what about? So I'm still working to try to get the ultimate image. But this is basically a badge in action. So if you look, the earner, number one, creates some evidence. In this case, it's a creative writing paper. Let's say this is a creative writing badge. That evidence is assessed via some sort of criteria, we're at number two, that an issuer has come up with or devised or posted or whatever. Once the earner writes the creative paper in this case and the issuer judges it against the criteria, then the issuer makes a decision, number three, do they issue the badge or not? So if they issue the badge, number four, the earner receives the badge. Ideally, the evidence, in this case the creative writing paper, the creative writing paper criteria, whether that's a rubric or whatever it is, and the issuer, there's web links attached to the badge back to all three of those things so that you can go as a third party and click on that badge and see those three things. So that's image number one. Image number two, this is more of a kind of a flow charty thing. So the earner would view the creative writing paper criteria. Earner says, hey, I want to earn this badge looks at the criteria, sees what it is, makes a decision. Am I going to earn this badge or not? If no, then they're done. It, it, it's over. But if they say yes, then they create the evidence. They create the creative writing paper. That is then provided back to the issuer through some means. It could be electronic. It could be handed to them. It doesn't really matter. Um, then the issuer makes the decision. Does the evidence meet the criteria? And if not, they say, hey, try it again, revise it. Or they could say, you just shouldn't earn the badge. Um, but if the, if the issuer says yes, the, the evidence meets the criteria, then they issue the badge. So that's badges in action two. Here's yet another one. Um, this is about displaying a badge. So the earner is, should be at the center, which is where they should be in the badge. Um, if you look at the badge, it has those three different things attached to it. It has the issuer, the criteria, and the evidence attached to it. Um, and via the metadata that's baked into the badge, as they call it. Um, and then the earner has the option of either putting the badge in the Mozilla's open badge backpack, which is a public repository for you. You have your space and you can put your badge in there. And then share it out to other sites on the web, their portfolio or whatever. Or if they're working within a system that creates badges that's independent of Mozilla, they might just push the badge directly out and bypass the backpack altogether. Um, most badge systems that are being built will let you do both. They'll either let you keep the badge within the system and display it through a variety of means or, and or push it out to the backpack. Once, it, once a badge is pushed out to the backpack, however, it's kind of frozen. So if, for example, you had a badge that had to be renewed every two years for some sort of certification, the old badge in the badge backpack would at some point become obsolete, but you couldn't just change it and update it there. You'd have to update it within the original system and then delete your old badge in the badge backpack and add, it, add the new one in. So there's a little bit of connection stuff going on there that's, that can be a little fun. Are there any questions? Yeah, feel free. Go help yourself. I don't care. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the potentials, um, potential benefits. So, the terrible screen, but. Um, I'll just say I want to say thank you for all three of those views. Okay. That was very helpful. Okay. I have a fourth one, but it didn't get into this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure as soon as I show that, people say, "But what about?" So, Mozilla has. We go to the go to the Open Badges Initiative on Mozilla. They have a, a nice complex graphic that kind of shows stuff from the issuer to the earner to the display and all that. So what I'm trying to do is try, I'm trying to show the process versus the overall stalls. Um, so here's a couple of things. Um, the whole idea behind badges are they're more green more, and they, they're really ideally attached to a specific skill or, or several skills. But when you think of the whole idea of people coming out of a public university and having a transcript at the hand of someone that says, I attended Econ 101 and got a B plus. 
what the heck does that mean? Nobody knows what that means. People at Penn State don't even know what that means, some of them, if they're not in you know, economics. So the idea behind badges, at least at one level, is if you have this badge that says, I earn an economics badge, which is kind of broad, but let's say they earn a, something about supply chain in economics, you click on that badge, you can see exactly what that means. And you can follow it back if you issue it, and maybe you can follow up with the issuer. Um, they're also, I think, really good. So that's kind of formal certification. It's a very granular level. I think they're great for informal certification, too. There's a lot of stuff that goes on here at Penn State to see that never is recognized. I mean, they can put it on their resume, but again, it's like, oh, so you were the treasurer for that club? You know, well, what did you learn? You know, there's, they, you got to go through that whole process of trying to pull that information out. Badges would be a great way. So if you were a club treasurer, you could earn the club treasurer badge, and there'd be some stuff attached to that that would show exactly what you did. I mean, it's a budget of this size, and we did these initiatives, and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. That would be really, really cool. Um, students coming out of, out of higher ed institutions today have to be able to differentiate themselves from the pack, or they're not going to get a job. This is one great way of doing that. Um, Question. I have a quick question. You were talking. You're talking about this granularity. I mean, from your perspective and all the things that you've seen, does it make sense to have all these little badges, or to have like a badge that represents? That's the million dollar question. Okay. So, so the idea of Uber badges mm -hmm. or badges that lead to a certificate or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So right now you're in ten badges you have on your resume. That's great. What happens down the road 10 years from now when you have a thousand badges? Mm -hmm. So how do you cluster them? How do you organize them? How do, how do you say these five badges add up to this meta badge is another term that they've thrown around. No one knows yet. Everyone's asking that question. Okay. What does that lead to? You know, the complexity. How do you simplify the complexity? Because I could see this. I could definitely see 10 years from now you could have literally a thousand badges. Right. And then an employer's going to look at that and say, I'm not going to look through that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I would say there's one site that's like, I think Code Academy is like that right now, where you go through the lessons and you get all of these small badges and then do a project and you get a project badge too, but it still displays like HTML 101, part one. Right. That, so. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be nice if, a, if at the individual level, if, if a system is built, that you can either, the, the organization can organize those badges for you or you can self organize them. And it's no different than files and folders. Yeah, and I also like that idea of, you know, when you renew the badges and what happens to the badges over time. If there's a skill or, you know, that is represented by a badge that erodes over time, that it would somehow get smaller or start to get a little less visible until you update and then, you know, so you don't have to worry about interchange. And, and that, that's, <laughs> that's the debate that's going on, too, the idea of revocable badges. So. Or even just the date, the year that you achieved it. I know when I got certified in Final Cut, I got certified in Final Cut 6. Um, and so people who are looking at that are going to say, oh, well, we're on Final Cut 10 now, so obviously it's been several years since you achieved that badge, and so it doesn't hold as much weight as, like, I've been, final, I've been certified in Final Cut 10. But the, so the, uh, the idea, there's a couple things going on. Number one, you, you could right now put that in the badges and the metadata. You know, I, this is the year, and that's fine. Mozilla's kind of like, that. we think that might be good enough, but they're not sure. So we've come up with the idea that the issuer ought to be able to revoke the badge at a given point in time um, and, and swap the badges out. Or, or they're talking about having these badges that you can go in and modify. So you could, you know, update the badge as you update your, your skill set. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, Chris, that's all of you. Just to kind of build on Robbie's question, one of the things that we've been talking about, uh, Brett, I, and a couple of others, is, is do you want to have kind of a social component to this too, right? Do you want to let employers come in and say, okay, we're going to determine and vote out the vote down or something like that, what we feel is most valuable, or faculty members or peers or something like that, so that they're kind of, you can develop this organic system of figuring out which badges rise to the top, which ones mean the most. Uh, but I think it is a really open question. You know, how, do you, how granular do you want to be? How much do you want to clump these kinds of things? It's a lot of open questions. Yeah. Kind of stuff. And Chi, you ask about revocable badges. So imagine I, I'm an issuer and I issue you a badge, and three years go by and, and you're, you're, it was to certify you in something, you're no longer certified in it according to whatever standard. Um, can I, as an issuer, go in there and take that badge back from you? So it's the equivalent of walking up to the 
for the Boy Scout ripping the badge off their sash. Oh, man. So, which, yeah, so there's just some there's some yeah. social implications with that that people haven't really thought through. Maybe if you could archive it, you know, it wouldn't be yeah. in something that's visible, <laughs> but you could go into their profile and see that a few years ago yeah. they were certified sure. in of that. Absolutely. I like the visual that I was getting, Robbie, when you were saying something about it minimizes in size. Like when you're playing Mario Kart and you get yeah. zapped and you shrink. Yeah. It's yeah. like over time That's as kind the badge gets older, that yeah. there's something visual that it gets yeah. either less, you know, less colorful that or something. That's really a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could be a, the badge fades. Right, mm -hmm. fades. It could be, you know, something like that. Because so. you still did earn it. I mean, you still did right. she's a skill. You did. You did. Yeah. And other things have to build on that, so you shouldn't just take it. Right. Wait, you know, you did it. I, I agree. But it kind of motivates you because, you know, if you're playing a game where you're you're starting to lose fuel or whatever, you're like, oh, I got to do something right now to get myself back up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like otherwise, people are looking at my badges and they're thinking, oh well, great, he did that three years ago, but what is he doing now? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. No, no, no. Seems like it would be somewhat motivational, all, right? Which is yeah. kind of the point yeah. of the badges. Yeah. Those are all points. Everyone's trying to chew on them right now and try to figure it out. Um. So, you know, other things... Um, Brett, the, Laura has a question before okay. you move on. Okay. She's asking, does the skill need to be demonstrated and would she not get a badge for uh, attending today's session? Okay, um, so I don't know whether I have that in the slide later on or not. I think I do, but but the best of badges, if you want to look at it that way, or really, really solid badges, should have some sort of demonstrable skill. However, I personally don't think there's anything wrong for a person handing a badge out for attending something. It's just the weight of that badge is much less. It's the badge is not going to make any kind of claims that you learned anything. Like if I give you a badge for today's session, that badge wouldn't claim you learned anything from it, just that you you were there. And there's a lot of talk about well, what if somebody attends 20 professional development seminars and you know, gets badges for all of them? What does that mean? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. That might count for something. It shows at least they're interested. I mean, you might not have any demonstrable evidence attached to the badge per se that they're they're better at their job because of what they did, but it does demonstrate an interest. So I don't know if I agree with that. What's that? I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, and that's that's fine. Uh, I, do you, I don't know if you've ever played Foursquare like the I a little bit, yeah. Okay. And not the game where you draw on the sidewalk but the, <laughs> <laughs> the electronic <laughs> question once before. Um but I know I'm, that I'm you really know. old school. I only know the sidewalk. So can you oh, okay. the other one? It's um it's it's a it's a social kind of game that you play on your phone. You check into different locations, and if you check into certain locations, you get badges. And they're not really, uh, they're they don't they're not very forthcoming with information on how you get badges. It's just that if you happen to check in at certain places at certain times, you get badges for certain things. And they're turning into a business model where businesses are actually like you know they can pay to have. Uh, a badge be awarded when you go to these particular places and more people when you go to those places and check in or want to come back and get specials or whatever it is. That's sort of a very quick overview of, of Foursquare. But I know a lot of people just run around town checking in places, not because they're shopping there, not because they're doing anything in particular, but because they want these badges. And I, I would see that happening if there was nothing that the user had to sort of submit back to say that there was evidence that there were getting what we want them to get out of go of doing this because just attending something you could sleep through it you get a badge for it absolutely you get the same badge as somebody who is actively participating in it. absolutely I, I agree and that's why i don't think they carry that much weight you know maybe they don't care anyway but they're they're in my mind they're much, they carry a far less weight <coughs> as opposed to a badge that you attended a Photoshop class, and you handed something in that you did in Photoshop before and after picture or whatever. But wouldn't it make more sense to tie something else into that badge in order for it to mean something, rather than just having a whole bunch of fluffy badges out there? It's sort of like, I don't know, it sort of makes them not as coveted if everybody in the world could get this badge. Well, then who cares? Why would you want to get it? Well, like um, the, from the app, the scavenger app, usually sometimes you can tie, actually. You have to go mm -hmm. take pictures of Yeah, you have to do something. Yeah. Have to right, do so there's that, so like in the scavenger stuff, there's mm -hmm. actual evidence yeah. that you hand in. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, what if you, like, it can be a little cumbersome. Let's say every professional development thing that you attend, you have to take an assessment. Well, that doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. It's kind of penalizing people who are doing that. So what if, like, you had some kind of a, a rubric, like, you know, you have certain objectives that you're trying to fulfill today, right? Mm -hmm. So that all gets collected, and at a certain point, 
the system puts together an assessment and then asks you questions about all the professional development that you've done. And if you are proficient in it, then it displays on your badge. So it's less, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. because you have to plan and people have to plan those events anyway, it seems like it would be nice if you could somehow use that and collect it for something. I, I, I think that would be a great idea. You know, that brings up another thing about different levels of the same badge. So people are talking about the, you know the bronze, silver, and gold level, um, and that's again a big issue that people are you know you you do you know 10% for the bronze, you do 50% for the silver, you do 100% for the gold or whatever. Nobody's figured that out either. So, but we we kind of have a similar analogy right now that you can audit a course. Okay. So you just attend the course but not hand any criteria in. But wouldn't it be neat if we had professional development where? You could choose to just simply attend, or you could choose to attend and then be assessed. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the reason why I wanted to bring that up, I mean, that's just something I just thought up, but the reason I bring that up is because I'm getting ahead of myself here, but badges can be very scary for higher ed because they could force changes in our entire assessment prod mm -hmm. perspectives and how we assess students and how we, how we validate our own efforts. Mm -hmm. you know, how we validate our assessment and make sure that their our assessments are valid. It could be really scary. I was thinking of that as a huge <clears throat> benefit. <laughs> I, I I think it is as, as an instructional designer. I think it's a huge benefit. But think about it from an administrator standpoint, where all of a sudden we have certified accountability in areas where there might not have ever been any before. Nobody's ever asked for it before. It could be scary. I think that also brings up um, the other social implication of it, the, this idea that badges could potentially become the virtual equivalent of everybody gets a trophy. So if um, right now Mozilla is leading uh, and can certify which badges can potentially be given, but the whole idea of badges was also coming from the idea that um, you remove gatekeepers from education. So now if I don't have to go to university mm -hmm. to get a badge, Somebody can who's a programmer can be certified to give these badges, but down the line, <clears throat> I need to prevent, and I think this is where it really uh, holds significant ramifications for education, which badge is going to be more valuable than another? And because anybody can come up with a badge, and it's the equivalent of um, middle school where everybody gets a trophy in the last stage. Yep. I agree. I mean, we've had discussions here amongst ourselves about. Who, who should be the gatekeeper of the badges? So, you know, if you have a very highly reputable faculty member at a very high level institution issue a badge, that's probably going to carry more weight than if you know, Brett Bixler just goes out and issues a badge. Right. You know? So the issuer has to go through some <clears throat> vetting or. And we've talked that. about that. That that perhaps could be a good thing. Or oh. or they're they're if you want to call it grandfathered in or whatever. You know, if you go out go up to um, some of, the, some of the, you know, the people that are the gurus of their field, most people are already saying they're the gurus because they publish, they've done all this stuff. And so if they're going to issue a badge to a student, chances are they're, they'll do right by it. You know, they'll, they won't issue badges to people that don't deserve them or haven't earned them. But again, you have that whole thing of, of evidence and criteria behind the badge anyway. So if you did, so they're kind of self-correcting. So if you have a person that's issuing badges, and the evidence and the criteria doesn't stand up over time, that person's reputation will be hurt. So, and we talked about the whole idea. I don't know if we've done here, but we've talked amongst ourselves the idea of, of the social aspect of being able to vote a badge up or down, you know, or being able to vote a person up. So, so let's say a person earns a good teamwork badge. And everyone that's worked with that person over the last ten years to do that and give them a you know plus one or a thumbs it up, that badge is at the same level because they've earned it. You know the, the issuer has given it to them and there's criteria and evidence there. But then you have also have other third parties validating the badge for that individual. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the one thing that I see maybe a little opposite, you know, I think it's less about who's giving the badge and who is actually earning the badge. So let's say you know people might say, well. Brett's badge isn't as important as someone else's. Well, who's to say that? You look at the student and what they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's what, in some ways, might be a little scary to higher ed, is that there might be some validity, and you know, somebody you wouldn't necessarily give validity to, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're really uh, careful about who they're giving badges to, it might actually mean something. Oh, look, I got a badge, and only he, this person only gives out so many badges. Whereas here's this university that's giving out all these badges. You know, I don't know if that. Well, and and, and then the prospective employer that comes in and says, I don't care if the badge came from this person or this university, as long as I can look at it and validate that they did what they said they could do. Mm-hmm. That's a threat to, to hire it, too. And that becomes really important when you start talking about like MOOCs right, or open courseware. Right. All of a sudden, taking this free course can get you as much as you can get from taking a you know, $5,000 course at a resident university. What does that mean? What are students going to do? So, uh, it's a right. really important question. So I, I see a couple things in the chat. And, and Chi, I'm, I'm guessing you're just, I'm not sure if you're asking a question or if you're just kind of um, typing in your own thoughts there. Um, so, yeah, trail of learning. A trail badges should be a trail of learning. Absolutely, if you have a trail of badges, and are Ivy League, Ivy League badges better? Well, that's I don't know. I don't know. Um, she just, she just, she's just tweeting. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so, in theory, they could support better individualized learner support. Um, they definitely can capture the learning path in history. There's no doubt about that. And they might even assist in accreditation um, because. For, for colleges here that already have accreditation standards, they're pretty clear, crystally clear to, clearly defined. And this might be another way, if badges were done in conjunction with accreditation standards, it would be another way for an accreditation body to come in and look and see how these students indeed met the criteria that we've jointly established with Penn State or whoever um, to, to assure accreditation. Here's a couple of uses of course completion badges is kind of a no-brainer. Um, although that one is, could perhaps be too broad in scope in terms of what we're talking about, in terms of, you know, that's really no different than getting a mark on your transcript. Uh, but I imagine they're going to be used for that too. Um, competency based badges. So you might have competencies laid out in a course and they've demonstrated those competencies. I think that's, that's one of the really good uses for them. Um, could have honors badges. People, you know, excel above and beyond. They could. Or, in, not necessarily in a course, but, but maybe in a course, but in a program too, or a club or whatever. Um, we talked about the event participation badge and those not having perhaps as much weight. Um, community membership badges might, might be really good, um, especially that last one for students that show that they're involved in things beyond the acad- just pure academic world. Um, okay, so those are some of the real pie in the sky. These things are wonderful. Sort of thing. What's, what's some of the problems with them? Um, the infrastructure and metadata that sits behind is evolving right now. It's not fixed. And it's not going to be fixed for a long time. People are really arguing about this stuff. You can tell just by what we're talking about in the room. Imagine that nationwide. Imagine that globally. There's a lot of talk going on. Um, without the ability to digitally sign a badge, you will have spoof badges. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the, my, Ken Lang, my colleague, has the President of the United States badge that he issued to himself. <laughs> and it seems very authentic. You click on it, it has the seal. It takes you to a site that, that, that lists the criteria for the president. All that. So, so your we, LOL uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So We've really been pushing Mozilla to include that as an option so that you know, we can ensure that, that the issuer is indeed the issuer. Um, the support structures needed by an institution, they don't really exist yet. I mean, we're talking about here. Um, you know, you probably heard of Purdue that they're doing some stuff, um, but and they build a system, but I'm not sure that they have the support structures behind it. Um, policies, what are they? Nobody knows that yet. Um, what does it mean for revenue? What does it mean to accept from the outside? So, student comes in and says, um, I have these ten badges that I worked previously. I want them to count as as the equivalent for these three courses at Penn State. No one knows how to handle that yet. No one's figured that out. Um, but again, it does force us to examine our current assessment structures, as I mentioned. And there's a picture I stole that from Chris. That's skeptical cat. I love skeptical cat. <laughs> I, I think one of the things too is that soft skills are so hard to measure, and so and and those are becoming more and more important in the workplace. So negotiating, teamwork, innovation, all those things are much more intangible. Um, but I think also more of what employers are looking for. And, and the idea that I talked about, about being people being able to vote up a badge, 
that adds some validity to it. So I might issue a badge and say, you're a great team player. But that's just me issuing, even though, you know, we work together on a project or whatever. But if everyone in the room that worked on the project votes that badge up, that adds some validity to it. It's not just one person saying you've earned this. <coughs> I worked with her here. I worked with her here. I worked with her there 10 years ago. And she was great then. But, you know, all these kind of things can, can go into that. I think what you're pointing to is the fact that those resources don't exist. So resources like an um, like a MOOC for soft skills, right? You can get that uh, verified in computer science or some of the other ones that are out there. Computer science is pretty much the biggest one that's around in various forms. But there aren't places where you can go and be assessed on the soft skills and then yeah. be able to put that Yeah, yeah, very true. And it's hard to remove the social dimensions in that. Because while, you know, I mean, I think, um, like, LinkedIn is a great example where you can receive some sort of peer pressure to, like, write a, you know, a positive review of me or something like right. that. Right. Um, you know, or the people that are just more, Don't you know, trust me. people that are more extroverted or amiable tend to get more positive feedback in, mm -hmm. in all environments. So it's, um, then it, it questions, it calls into question the validity of the, the issuer again, I guess. Is yes, but it just, it's not equivalent to <laughs> right, what, any number of other And what things. stops like your mom from going in and, and upvoting your cooperation badge or whatever <laughs> that you earned at work? Right. right. <laughs> I think we see that now, right? With like LinkedIn, right? These endorsements that you can give people. Right, right, right. right. Well, who are you? What do, what do you know about that? What does this know? Uh, yeah. I think that gets the best point about having real evidence. If your mom wants to say something, she's going to have to prove that it really means something. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mom has got to get to work. <laughs> the baby book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so she she writes. Um, it's common that students consider education the same thing as tangible skills equals degree equals passport to a job. Um, yeah, tangible skills only. Yeah, and I think badges can help with those non tangible skills that hopefully we pick up as the broader educational experience. Here you hear the thing that people should come to campus and they should be in the dorm and they should attend this, that, and the other thing. I mean, there's a lot of validity to that. I mean, I, I have two daughters. One's an extrovert. It wouldn't have mattered at all. The other's an introvert, and this place is the best thing that ever happened to her. And not because not because of the courses that she's had. They were great, but it's because of the stuff that happened outside. So, um, and I like to throw this one up here because um, we talked about this. I honestly think administrators are going to panic a little bit when these things start to hit because of all the things that I just talked about. They don't have to measure them, account for them, and everything. So I think there's going to be a little, there's going to be a little, a bit of um, fun, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So I urge you, this is short enough, I'll leave it up here long enough to get right this down. Um, Henry Jenkins is, you know, he's been around a long time. He was at this, one of the first symposiums we ever had here. Um, very intelligent man, uh, makes me feel stupid. A lot of people make me feel stupid. He really makes me feel stupid when I talk to him. Um, he has some good points to raise about badge. So you might want to look at that one. Tinyurl.com slash badge skeptic. Um, this one by Michael, Michael Olnack talks about insurgent credentials of which badges could be considered that. Again, tinyurl.com slash BLO6UWY. <coughs> And the rest of these, uh, that's just credits for the presentation on need those. Um, I think I put most of those up front in the in the chat before we started talking back and forth. Um, but I mean, if you haven't ever seen Carl Cap's stuff, he's you know physically rather local to us, and that he's at Bloomsburg. Um, I definitely would recommend going to his blog site and reading because he doesn't blog just about badges. He blogs about a lot of different things. And he's very interesting uh, man. Um, I'm, you know, I feel enriched every time I talk to him. Um, and some of this other stuff is yeah, not really super important. Yeah, the, uh, these are the things that are already put in the chat. So we don't need to spend much time on that. But, and I can't show you this, unfortunately, but this is 
Jerry Orbach um, in Law and Order. He knocks on the apartment door, and the woman behind him says, show me your badges. And he says, badges? We don't need no stinking badges. And she says, what'd you say? He says, I say, yes, it's a good thing you ask for our badges. So, <laughs> so Jerry is my hero. Um, and I had a neat sound, but it probably won't play. So, Anyway, what else do you want to talk about? We have about 10 There's minutes. A question in the chat. Questions, comments? Okay, let's see. With the current badges, if I earn one, can I delete it? Yes, if you use most systems that create badges now that are proprietary, we'll let you delete it. But if you put, push something to the Mozilla's open badge backpack, you can go in and delete it. You didn't used to be able to. So. One question I have for kind of everybody that's here, it seems like there's representation from a lot of different places. Uh, what does everybody think about all this kind of stuff? I mean, is, there, is there enthusiasm? Do you see a need for it? Excitement? Questions? You know, it's kind of <coughs> some background. You know, we've been exploring this, I think, pretty heavily. You know, there's been some interest from the training side, from the organizational side, uh, from the academic side, obviously, and I think that we're looking to design a system that could accommodate these at Penn State, but having you know, the feedback of people like all of you, I think it's really helpful as a part of that. So where do you guys fall in? I have a very specific thing in the College of ISC. We have, um, we don't train people in particular programs, but what employers want is training in programs. And, and they also want the other things that we give our students. I mean, they do say, we keep coming back to you because even if they don't have the particular program, they're great team players, they have communication skills, and they learn something, and they're able to transfer that to learn this other program. But we're talking about how to, without doing a whole course on teaching a particular language or system, how can <coughs> we give something to the students? Maybe it's through just the clubs that the students organize, and a faculty member comes and teaches for three nights and a week, and then they could have something to put on their resume. I'm thinking this badge thing would be a great way to do that, for them to be able to say, I have this degree and I'm trained in this kind of thinking or this kind of project management, but here are the particular things that I learned. Mm. But what I'm wondering is, and, and so I guess, I guess it's the rubric part of it that makes it worthwhile, because I think the way we handle it right now, we just go down to the skills area, right? And we just say, I can do, and you list all these programs that you have. So I'm not sure if employers ever question that. If they never question whether you're telling the truth about whether you know those. <laughs> I'm just not sure whether the badge is really the extra length to go to then have a rubric to say, well, to what degree do they know mm -hmm. this language that they said they do? I don't know. No, I think it's a very valid point mm -hmm. because that, you know, the whole idea for higher education issue badges is for students to get jobs. I mean, that's, that's a gross statement, but let's just go there for a second. <laughs> and the, the prospective employers don't care whether you have a series of badges or just a transcript. There's a heck of a lot of work that goes into making these badges and validating versus the transcript, which is a, just an automated process. You can click on e-line, click a button, and get one. You're right. Right. I mean, maybe, as I'm just thinking this through here, maybe the value for us, because <coughs> we have regular companies that come and recruit our students, would be to work with the company to say, what do you want this badge to represent? Right, and then mm -hmm. then we put the stuff together educationally that would meet that. They've helped us create the rubric, and now they know. Okay, when we come, we want to interview the people who have these badges because these are the ones that we really care about. And, and and I agree with that. I think there should be a balance between doing that and also people in higher education institutions that have knowledge in their ear saying these are things that are important that they have to look at. I think there should be a balance. And so University of Phoenix seems to have flopped the other way and say, we're going to cater, I hate to use that word, but that's what some people would use, we're going to cater to the businesses out there so that our students get jobs. The flip side of that is we don't care what they think they need. We know what these students have to have coming out. I don't think either approach is right. I think there should be a balance, but that's just me. Are you are you finding that employers are still primarily looking at a resume or more and more looking for some sort of portfolio or web presence from students that a badge would neatly kind of package with? Um, you know, I, I, the last time I looked at this was probably five or six years ago, and things have changed so much, I don't know. I mean, then we, we had an e-portfolio system, and we were questioning whether anybody was really looking at it. 
And at the time, the employers were saying, no, not really. Mm. So, uh, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. Five years later, what are they looking at now? That's good point. So we trashed your um, portfolio system as a result. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine brings up a point. Students like to show off their accomplishments to each other. Um, I'd like to provide incentives, compliments, but I am concerned about not violating FERPA regs at the same time. I, I know there is some discussion among a subgroup that, that <coughs> working with Mozilla and other people to talk about those sorts of things, especially for badges um, that are issued to minors, for example. Uh, that's related area. But, but I haven't been following that, but, but Lorraine, if you're interested in that and you want to go the distance, you can join the, the Google group uh, where that kind of stuff is being discussed as we as we talk here. I know it's being discussed. I know you guys have been working with badges, so I'm kind of interested in your perspective on this. Do you think it's something that's worth it? And kind of a follow-up, um, I don't know, I can't help but think of this as being like, you, you've got to have something that's program-wide that follows you throughout a program, not just like in one course here or there. I, I wondered from your experience and your perspectives what what you see. Oh, Chris, if you want to talk about that too, but, but I'll talk about what I did in training services last semester, mm -hmm. which is I did set up a pilot and I did issue badges, but I kind of suspected this going in, but there's almost like a critical mass for badger. If you were earn one or two badges in, in 20 courses, big deal, it doesn't mean anything. It's only until it becomes system-wide and systematic, I think, Will they start to mean something to the to the individuals in the programs that support support the badge issuing? Um, so I think there's some sort of critical mass there. I, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if you have anything. Do you no, want to I, I agree with that sentiment. I think it, it makes a lot bigger impact if it is on a broader scale, whether you're talking about a department or a major or a program or something like that. Um, as far as its its long term value, I really. I believe in it, not so much because of badges, though, you know, we do game stuff, so it makes sense that I believe in that, but I think the idea of uh, some level of accountability, I think, is really going to be important. I mean, if you look at what's happening, so we just, we were in a meeting uh, with some folks a couple weeks ago, and the idea of what the core council has recently done has come up, and how every department now is being forced to go back and say, okay, what are your core values? What is it that you really believe in? And are you finding ways to teach that? And if you say yes, well, how do we know? How can you prove that? Um, I think that competition from open resources, I think the fact that our prices keep going up, uh, I think people are going to want to know what, is, what am I getting out of this, guaranteed. Um, so I think that there's a lot of things happening uh, right now. And you could probably make this, this case that this has happened every decade. There's been all oh, this sea change, right? Things are changing now. But um, from my perspective, it feels like there is a lot of uh, need to find some kind of evidence of the kind of things that you're teaching, that you say that you're teaching, uh, and then the students can reflect on those kinds of things. I think that that's really important and valuable, um, so just from my perspective. I mean, I almost feel like if we created a system where you could be accumulating badges, and you, like, you could almost take that system, move it down to the high school level, you can move it beyond, the, you know, when you graduate. And it would be something that people would find value in over time. I feel like, you know, it's something that we need to really consider as we're kind of getting in the situation we are right now. Um, what are we, what's the value add? And then people will stay connected. Maybe even employers would say, oh, you know, we'll pay for whatever it costs for you to stay in the system because we know that we're going to be able to continually evaluate you and we know mm -hmm. what your skills are and maybe we could spend more of our time putting together mini modules that help to, you know, uh, reinforce skills that we've taught students <coughs> rather than thinking about whole courses all the time. Maybe, maybe we could think about projects. Maybe employers could get involved in helping to create our projects because they know, okay, in the system it's going to tell you whether a student is employable at a certain point you know, because they have done this, this, or this, you know, and anyway. I think that's what MOOCs are doing now, so um, the big case being Udacity with the fact that they have this three-level, at least for their intro Python class, three-level evaluation. You get X number of questions right, you're a certain level, Y, another. If you get all of them, you're like the gold star mm -hmm. student. And then they have partnerships with corporations who are feeding directly into those students, and I think there's some 
is either on Udacity or Coursera headhunters fee associated with that. Hmm. So those employers really know, like, this is teaching me skills. If this person is at this level, I can come in and say, okay, this person has the skills that I actually need, and they've proven that. Hmm. I mean, another thing we haven't talked about is, though, if, if you do have a suite of badges, um, as a mentor, you could look at somebody's suite and find out where the holes are. Hmm. You know, hey, have you thought it? Or, or even, you seem to be really interested in this area because you've earned these badges, and it's like an Amazon. You bought this, so you might be interested in this. You know, you've done this, you might be interested in this. Sounds kind of silly, but it might help people in the lifelong learning process to, you know, gradually expand their their sphere of learning. So, right, bundled skills. That's cool. Yep, I like that. Do we? Oops. Oh, sorry. I, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do one more thing, and then we're out of time because it is one o'clock. So. Um, I just threw my, my name up there. I just want to thank you for coming. This has been great. I, I really appreciate it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, to me, the interesting spaces in higher ed is, um, are like the non-degree areas, like training services, student services, global programs, like the places where students do a lot and learn a lot but don't get a lot of recognition for it. I mean, as of right now, a Penn State degree has a lot of inherent value, but like, there's not a way to measure those extracurricular experiences. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll conclude with Laura had a question. Do you have Penn State specific examples online about faculty slash student affairs, et cetera, using badges that we can check out? I'm not aware of any. Are you, Chris? They're, being, they're happening now. Okay. That's the best way to answer that, but we can share those things as soon as we. Okay. So, Laura, we will share those as soon as we have them. Chris says they are happening now. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate you coming. It was a good session. Really Thank good. You. <coughs> A meeting with the